guys. So, some of you might not know that, aside from herbs, I really find plants and insects really interesting as well. I mean, you know, I like animals in general. Mammals are awesome, don't get me wrong. But I really like insects, and I'm starting to get into a lot of aquatic insects. I find them very fascinating. So I'm thinking of making, like, or I'm already getting everything I need to start out my own, um, I guess, aquatic ecosystem. So I'm going to get some bioactivated pond soil. Um, I purchased some plants at a local pet store today and some feeder guppies as a simple uh, fish that can sustain itself without being nourished with fish food and a lot of other things like worms. I got some dragonfly nymphs. Don't know if I'm going to put them in there because it's like a big jug with like, you know, those like maple syrup jugs, that sort of thing. So they'll die if they can't come out of the jug and, you know, become or emerge as dragonflies. So I don't want to put them through that. So I might just raise them for fun. But uh, up here I got one nymph chilling right there. Yeah, I'll bring them down so you can see. I got my guppies in here with one nymph, letting the nymph enjoy a meal if he wants it. But he doesn't seem to be interested in the guppies right now. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'll show you quick. I mean, of course it stresses them out. But they can they can be out of the water for a quick, a short period of time. I'd like to show you gently... You see, dragonfly nymphs, yeah, I'll leave it for now, have a special way of hunting. What dragon, like, what you wouldn't know is, yeah, for starters, for those of you that don't know, dragonflies have an aquatic larva stage. So, this is a baby dragonfly. All dragonflies come from the water. They could be in there for up to a year, a few months. I'm thinking this one overwintered, so... It was under water during the winter, living its life. And they are crazy predators. They feed on anything they can snatch. And the way dragonfly nymphs hunt is they actually have, um, how would I put it? Not a second, maybe almost like a second jaw that dislocates itself. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a pair of hooks underneath the head of the baby nymph. And when they see something appealing to them they want to hunt or eat, it just kind of flies out and grabs, pierces, whatever it is, and draws it towards their mouth. Now, if you grab a dragonfly and put tweezers, it'll start going nuts and flailing, and it'll um, try and bite you with this. So I just want to show you what that... Oh, you can maybe see it from here. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Do you see that underneath there? It's like a, it's a second job. But anyway, here we go. Do you see that? Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, and they can shoot, or they they pr they can to flee from their predators. What they do is they actually kind of propel themselves through the water by expelling water through their abdomen. So it's kind of neat. I mean, you have Madagascar hissing cockroaches that can push water, or sorry, press air through their spiracles or their airways, and to produce a hissing sound. And these guys have like a, a hole at the end of their, let's see, if I can just, sorry buddy, I don't want to stress you too much. They have a hole at the end of their abdomen that they shoot water through that. So yeah, alright, we'll leave that guy alone now. But yeah, that's really neat, eh, the uh, projectile, that's a better way to put it. The little, that's not their actual jaw, that just grasps it and brings it to the actual mouth that just starts mauling and eating the item. Animal. Some of their favorite foods are tadpoles and other like aquatic larvae. But yeah, they love these fish. This one was eating a fish earlier, so it's probably not too hungry. But sometimes they go nuts on and try to eat. Um, over here, I just got some algae, a few snails in here, so I'm getting ready with them. And then the real cool thing over here is this area. This is where I have a lot of the things I'm going to need. 
So here, that's just a fake plant. I got these crazy little worms. I, I thought they were blood worms at first, but they're definitely not. I guess they're just an aquatic, just type of aquatic worm. They go nuts in the mud. And the funny thing is, yeah, just sorry, guys, I can't really edit my video, so it's a cheesy camera, but I'm working on that and get a better one. But anyway, yeah, I can't pause and continue, so. Yeah, the funny thing with these guys is when you disturb the water, they hide in the mud. So I don't know what they're doing if they're feeding or just getting oxygen in the water. If I go like this. Oh, they're gone. Oh, crap. <laughs> Good timing. There goes Kovu's timer light. Here, guys. My bad. Let's see if I can move this light over here. Alright. That didn't work too well. Yeah. Wow. This sucks. Sorry, guys. Well, another good reason to get the video camera I'm saving up for. I'll be able to stop and continue so that you guys don't have to watch me do this. Alright. There we go. Where were we? Okay. So this is neat. Yeah, there's a few different things in here. Uh, there's a back somewhere right there, and the nymphs kill it. Kind of sucks, but there's another one chilling or just hiding in here somewhere. Unless he got eaten too. I should have learned the first time and taken him out. But what I'm really excited about is I just noticed. I I went well. Yeah, there's two nymphs in here. Here's one of them doing his jaw thing. Sorry, buddy. Then I went. Oh no, where's my other nymph? What's this? It's shed skin. This dragonfly nymph molted. While I was taking care of it. Thought I was kinda neat. So I'm like, whoa, it's molted under my care, must be doing good. So this is a dragonfly nymph's shed skin. And currently it is quite a bit larger than this. He's hiding. We'll put him I'll show him to you right now. So he's drying off, but here he is. He's a beast. It's quite a large specimen. It's really neat because you can see the organs right now while he's still hardening. His e while his exoskeleton's in the process of hardening, you can see that. But I don't want to touch him or poke him much because he's very fragile in this state, and it's the last thing we want to happen. Because if he is, if his body is damaged, it'd be permanent. So. But once he's dried off, I'm going to put him in with a fish. He'll probably go nuts. He'll be hungry after molting. So yeah, when they molt, it gives them the opportunity to grow. They, their skin expands in the water, and it'll eventually, I guess, harden, you could say. And yeah, so right now it's a really pale green color, but eventually it'll turn dark again and be yellowy or dark brown like the other one right here, who is really intimidated by him. I'm worried that this, I mean, look at the size difference. Come on. Of course, you can see he's doing his jet. Oh, there's that back swimmer. There he is. He's all right. Hey, buddy. These guys are cool, too. They're, they're predators, too. What they do is they wait on the surface, and when insects fall in, they come over and they poke them with their needle-like mouth parts, and... They inject them with uh, toxins or digestive fluids that will break down the tissue of their meal or prey to liquefy it, and then they'll drink it. Kind of like the same concept used by a giant water bug, which is my next goal. I love giant water bugs, and I've been trying to look for one. I haven't found one lately. And that's what I'd really like to keep in my ecosystem over all these organisms. I've raised them before, and they're amazing. Like, they're just great. If you guys haven't seen a giant water bug, type giant water bug under YouTube after you watch this video, or right now, I don't even care. you got to see these things. They're amazing. They're North America's, well, I shouldn't say North Well, I can tell you they're Canada's largest insect, so, like, largest true bug. So, they're quite big. They grow to be like two inches or more long. So, they're impressive. But yeah, that's my ecosystem in the making so far. I also got a predaceous diving beetle right up in there. Hiding in the water. 
Sorry, it's dark over here, but anyway. He has one guppy to see if he'll eat it. But yeah, that's about it. So yeah. I'll let you guys know how this 